Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Chill Time with Kelly. I am your host, Kelly. And today we have another special guest with us today. This is my friend, Celine. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. You are so sweet. So, Celine and I actually have known each other since high school. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's how we met. So, I'm going to ask so Celine to start off with how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing pretty okay. I'm hanging in there. That's good. That ad is good. I'm super, super happy about that, that you're doing well. So, first off, what I'm going to be starting off with. So, um, can you just give a little bit of background about yourself so the audience yeah, can know? Of course. So, my name is Celine. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I currently am studying to get my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling, and I'm gonna hopefully go for my LMHC. Mm-hmm. The first step is LP. Let me get the LP <laughs> and then we'll work on the LMHC. But that's the end goal. Sounds good. Um, I have a background in the theater arts. I did theater for a number of years. I also have a background with a forensic psychology as well. I went mm-hmm. to John Jay. If anybody listening, <laughs> I'm John Jay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I really am just a big uh, mental health and chronic illness advocate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, love that about uh, you, Celine, that you're just like overall so, so sweet. So um, if you're comfortable with this, um, you mentioned something about uh, chronic illness, so I'm pretty aware of it. So if you don't mind sharing, if you're, uh, however extent you want to share, what kind of illnesses are you currently battling with? Okay, so in 2021, March of 2021, I started experiencing a range of strange symptoms that like no doctor could really explain Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of dizziness heart palpitations mostly when I'd be standing up and just overall chronic pain just weird symptoms that like did not make sense in December of 2021 I was diagnosed with POTS which stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and in uh, January of 2022 Mm -hmm. so a month later I received the diagnosis of autoimmune dysautonomia which dysautonomia is a uh your autonomic nervous system controls all of your, let's say, subconscious functions, right? Your breathing, your heart rate, your digestion, everything. And mm-hmm. so when your autonomic nervous system is in dysfunction, those things would no longer understand how to regulate themselves. So mm-hmm. the things that my body should do normally, it does not. Uh, later on in 2022, I received a diagnosis of hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a rare connective tissue disorder. And if anyone knows, connective tissues are all over your body. And so what that means is that my collagen in my body, uh, it develops poorly. It, there, there's something wrong with the genetic, like the genes of it. So the connective tissues that are holding all of these major organs together are faulty. So it, that's basically the root cause of why my health went downhill. Oh my gosh, that is insane! And how are and um how are you coping with like that like medically like just on a medical standpoint? Medically, I mean, right now I definitely do have a lot of uh things that I have to follow up. Mm-hmm. Right now, there seems to be discussion with an issue with my liver that oh. we're following up. So. It, it is pretty exhausting. It mm-hmm. feels like every day there's like something else. It's almost, I've described it to playing whack-a-mole. It's oh, like just God. when you thought you had all the moles, there's like five more. Mm-hmm. And that really is what it feels like. But I've also been extremely blessed that um, certain tests that I've gotten, like I have come positive mm-hmm. for like these rare conditions, like other rare conditions that when we retested months later was completely negative. And like, that's all I can say is like, this divine intervention of like I ha- I'll ha- like test positive for these things and then um months later years later it'll be resolved itself I don't know what my body is doing oh but I have like a love-hate relationship <laughs> with my body a little bit so oh what I like God. to say I guess coping is more of a day-by-day mm-hmm. aspect like right now I'm doing okay actually tomorrow how I'm doing okay all right I, all right at least like if you have I mean like obviously the good and the bad days like mm-hmm. definitely are a struggle and I'm just as like I'm here for you girl like 
I, I'm here for you. I always check in on you. So yeah, um, Kelly, Kelly is always in my DMs like aww, every day. Kelly's yes. like checking in on me, and I have to say, I don't think that's a lot of things that we'll, we'll probably get into it. But yeah. when we talk like further into it, but yeah. um, not a lot of people have that when they deal with chronic illness mm-hmm. and disabilities. It's like people checking in on them, and I can mm-hmm. can say that Kelly has, you know, and like you said, like we met in high school. Yeah. Like we don't we like this is the one thing that like brought us together mm. like years later because yeah. like you went to different colleges. So yeah, exactly. Out, how life happens. Exactly, exactly. And you're still like a sweetheart, like oh, even you. then <laughs> for, and up to today. Oh, thank you. So, um the next question, like how since I know you told me you're a huge advocate for like mental health and like um obviously i'm sure like this um these medical issues have been affecting you mentally a like if you're however in depth that uh, you want to go into this how has these medical issues affected your mental health (sighs) getting you know you have to be honest with Mm -hmm. these type of things because i think in 2021, when I didn't know what was happening, a big thing that the disabled community and chronic illness community goes through is something called medical gaslighting, which gaslighting is becoming like a pretty popular term now, like pretty much people understand what it means. So gaslighting is when another person makes you question your reality um, and just has you, I guess, doubting yourself and like what you know to be true and like your gut feeling. In medical gaslighting terms, that means that a provider, whether that be like uh, a PCP or an endocrinologist, I don't know, just pulling out these random specialties, Mm -hmm. um, may blame your symptoms on a mental health condition, such as like anxiety, depression, stuff like that, without calling the test that you're requesting Mm -hmm. or without checking the right boxes. Mm -hmm. And what happened with me is, I won't, I won't name any (laughs) names. (laughs) so i went to my pcp at the time Mm -hmm. uh like immediately when the first episode happened i went to him the next day and i was kelly i was a wreck because health issues are it's like one of my biggest nightmares yeah it's one of my biggest nightmares and ever since i was a kid i was like always freaked out Mm -hmm. of like hospital tv shows and just being near hospitals like i did not like it Mm -hmm. and after i had my first pox attack i was just like something's wrong and like I was like oh my god something's wrong and what is it um I went to him and immediately he said that this was anxiety and to be fair I did prevent present very anxious but as the weeks went on and the months went on and it didn't go away even with counseling and stuff like that I presented to him of like I don't this is um and I remember this like it was yesterday Kelly it's ridiculous oh but um I was on the phone with him we were doing telehealth mm-hmm. like I said 2021 and telehealth is just that it's like you know prime um I said I think I have POTS mm-hmm. because I actually told my professor my symptoms because I was I missed class or something like that mm-hmm. and she was like hey like what's going on and so I told her my symptoms and she goes hey I have POTS like the professor had POTS and she said, you sound like you're experiencing what I experience on a day to day. And so I called my PCP and I was like, hey, like, can we run the test? Like, can I get a referral to cardiology? Like, can we just see if this is what it is? This Kelly was in April of 2021. Okay. He told me flat out, you can go to a cardiologist, but it's not going to help your health anxiety. It's going to make your anxiety and your panic attacks much worse. <laughs> So, like, you can keep chasing these rabbits if you want to, but, like, it's not going to make your anxiety any better. And so I kind of felt shamed for going to a cardiologist. And Mm -hmm. so I didn't until October of 2021 Mm -hmm. when I got a new PCP and I told her the story. And she was like, you know what? Why don't we send you to a cardiologist? Like, why don't we just do that? Mm -hmm. And had had he just gave me a referral, I mean, he did give me a referral. Don't get me wrong. He did. But he told me, like, 34 ways to Sunday how like following up with that referral would be terrible for me and how I would only be hurting myself Mm -hmm. so it was like this gaslighting and like emotional manipulation I don't think he realized he was doing it but Mm -hmm. unfortunately especially women and women of of color which I'm a multi-ethnic woman Mm -hmm. um you everyone experiences such higher medical gaslighting than like let's say cisgendered uh men would and that's unfortunately just the reality of the medical system in America yep but um yeah, I, I, during that time, everyone thought it was anxiety because that's what the doctor was saying. Oh and I God. spent several nights just alone in my room crying, being like, mm-hmm. I don't understand why my life 
is falling downhill. Mm-hmm. And there came a part of time where I actually considered going into inpatient. And that was a very, very dark time in my life. I had severe neurological, but I know now was um, neuropathy, like Neuro- small, probably small fiber neuropathy. Okay. I was having this burning sensation across my head. It felt like my head was on fire mm-hmm. and it was excruciating. Mm-hmm. And I remember calling up an inpatient mental health facility in Queens and I said, listen, I don't know why I thought this was gonna work, but I told him, um, the guy on the phone, I said, I'll come to your facility, I'll do treatment, but I'm a senior in college and I need my computer so that I can log on to classes. Mm -hmm. And he said, like, no, it's either you come inpatient and you have to, like, get, like, not go to your classes. But it was right before graduation. So if Mm -hmm. I would have done that, I was not graduating on time. So that whole 2021 of just knowing that something was wrong and no one listening to me probably felt the smallest, like, probably the darkest time of my life. Darkest. Oh my god. Um, so it definitely, definitely and then I don't mean I'll get off my soapbox soon, I promise. You. <laughs> <laughs> but then when you do get diagnosed, there's these mixed feelings of like, wow, we got it and like we can start treatment, but then it's like we got it mm-hmm. and there is there. And the realization of like you have to create a new normal now with that, you know, disease or disorder. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard. It was extremely hard. It still is hard. Like, not gonna lie, I had myself a good cry today. I was, I was like, I was, it's overwhelming. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. Could imagine. Yeah, that's what I tell everybody. Like, I tell my clients that I see an internship. I was like, if you have to cry, like, cry. I was like, there's nothing wrong with crying. Like, yes. Oh. Schedule a cry, Seth. It's fine. Exactly, exactly. And then, like, I totally agree with you. Like, sometimes, like, it's hard to stay positive all the time. Like, it's re- it's not as easy as someone makes it sound like. You're going to have your moments of um, when you feel, like, so small and it feels like it's you against the world. Or, mm-hmm. like, it's either, like, you're happy. Like, you try to be happy and, like, get your help. But then other people are not listening to you. And it just makes the process way, way harder. And especially, like, with medical well, as well, like, and, like, mental health, which is why I, like, I'm I'm also a huge advocate for, like, mental health. And obviously, that's why I created my show. Oh my God, yeah. Yes, yeah, that's why I created this um, podcast in the first place. Hey, so, but, yeah, no, at least I'm super happy that um, you, it's so glorifying and happy to see you at least in a better spot and you actually getting the treatment that you need yeah that is I, I like, think that was the hard part because mm-hmm. the more it's like a double-edged sword right because you yeah. know something's wrong so everyone tells you oh well get a second opinion mm-hmm. right but the more doctors that you go to and the more doctors that you say hey i've done the research i want this test i want that test the more that they put on your chart anxiety yeah. panic attack you know like yeah. at one point somebody even i forget who it is they're like oh do you think that these feelings of anxiety are correlated to your menstrual cycle? Which like, yeah, they could be absolutely, but I'm coming to you for cardiac reasons. Yeah. It, it always felt like it was blamed on mental health. But every time I would be with doctor's appointment, I would just feel like, like, I can't curse on this podcast. You can imagine what I felt like. <laughs> like I just felt like completely just over it. Like, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. But I, I'm very, very grateful for my team now. Like my team yeah. is amazing. That's good. That's good. At least um, you're in a better spot and you have like better doctors now. <laughs> At least that's good. So um, so my next two questions, I'm going to just tie it together because they're um, both of them are related. So how has like these battles like with your medical and then everything affected your day to day life? And then which includes school, because I know you said that you're still in school. So for me, so I go to St. John's University, and if anybody has been to St. John's, you'll know that it's an outdoor campus, and it's mostly, mostly, it's mostly hills. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm an ambulatory wheelchair user, mm-hmm. but for a good time, I did not have a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And with POTS, the biggest problem is that when you stand up, uh, or any postural change, really, your heart rate uh, increases, like, rapidly, and your blood pressure um it depends on what type of pots you have, but like my brush, my blood pressure decides if it wants to go up some days or if it wants to drop some days. It kind of does, again, like mm-hmm. the autonomic nervous system does not know how to function itself and control itself, so it just does whatever it wants to do. Mm-hmm. So for me, getting from point A to point B and getting across campus was like nearly impossible. Mm-hmm. 
um, because how am I going up and down? That's how I knew something was wrong because oh. I'm on the seventh floor of my building. Kelly, I would take the stairs up every single day. Oh I my think, God. I, I have a fear of elevators. So I would take the stairs up to my seventh floor apartment every single day, sometimes three times a day. I couldn't get to the second floor without my heart rate being 152. Oh my God. And that's when I, I one day I finally recorded it. And I said, I showed it to my PCP and I was like, this is not normal. And then she was like, yes, like we have to go to a cardiologist now because you're saying you make these trips up the stairs three to four times a day and you feel fine. And now I'm getting to the top of the stairs and my heart's like 160, 170. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because I can't, I can't breathe. So yeah. like, I, I think a daily life for me definitely has changed because as soon as I wake up, I wake up, I sit up. Maybe I look through my phone, look through TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. like that. But like, I have to take my morning vitals, mm -hmm. and depending on my morning vitals, I'll know how much medicine I have to take that day. Mm -hmm. um, because if my heart rate is too low, because with pops your heart can also go too low, I can't take my propanerol because mm -hmm. my propanerol is going to lower my heart rate even more, which mm -hmm. is more dangerous. So I have to go you know like how i feel that day but it's like every day it's a constant reminder because you have to get up and it's like okay take vitals mm -hmm. and it's just exhausting it's like i have to take my medications i eat and i have to take medications with eating because when you eat with pots your heart rate goes higher mm -hmm. so that's exhausting mm -hmm. um walking especially since recently since i've been flaring up recently has been really hard so i've been taking my wheelchair everywhere mm. i rely on the others around me to kind of help mm. and i've like lost that independence somewhat mm. so that's really hard school i can say for me and if anybody is going through it what helped me is that when i first went to st john's i met my advisor i didn't even know i had pots but i sat down with her and told her immediately like hey something's wrong i don't know what it is but I think we're going down a very long journey here medically. I told everyone right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Every, like, how I did it was that every first day of class, I would go to that professor at the end of class and say, hey, I have a chronic health condition. So this is the, I'm gonna need your help in terms of like, maybe I'll miss a deadline or I might need some extensions or mm -hmm. things like that. And they were all really, really like nurturing and wonderful. And St. John's amazing for that. That's good. Um, I can say, if you need to register with the Office of Disabilities on your campus, do it mm -hmm. i felt kind of like shamed not to like i felt like it was throwing in the towel but honestly having that on my record makes it so much easier in mm -hmm. classes because i'm 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 allowed certain accommodations mm -hmm. and I, it's not the flex and be like oh well, i need to be in an air conditioned room in july or else i cannot focus no i need to be in an air conditioned room or else i'm gonna pass out <laughs> like that that's just how it is like yeah. i'm not gonna you know, and online classes too, especially health. So. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. I feel like that's also like um. Well, I get, I'm glad you spoke at least on the online classes, and I'm so happy though saying John's like nerd you. Definitely, I feel like online classes has its pros and cons. Obviously, like for you guys, it's definitely a huge, huge pro. Oh, if like um you guys have disabilities, you could easily just sit in one place and be like, on the computer and just taking your classes. And but at the same time, like depending on like what you have to do online classes may be a little bit more difficult well as, especially if you work full time i'm like um it is insane yes that's that's where i'm really i'm blessed because i also work for st john's as a graduate assistant oh and when i was diagnosed they moved me completely online that's good um, so i was able to continue my job virtually because they didn't want to risk my health for me coming in and being exposed to like covid or mm. just like other viruses or things mm. like that so that was really good but i get what you're saying because I'm a mental health student. Yeah. So a lot of my peers are working at facilities that are like in person. Yeah. And I'm really lucky where my facilities are remote. Mm -hmm. And had I not gotten a remote facility to work with for internship, I don't know what I would have done this semester. Exactly. Medically. I have no idea what I would have done. Exactly, exactly. So I'm just happy that there is at least flexibility now for like online and in person. But like it's at the same, like you said, like at the same time, like, like um, it also like depends as well. Some people, some facilities don't offer online, like work. I know my facility, like depending on where you are, definitely doesn't. Since I work with viruses, and you can't really work with viruses in the house, because we would be in probably humongous trouble if we did that. No, people do that. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. So like, and um, if you, and if you do, don't invite me to your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Like, I don't, like off topic, but like, do you remember that one day here in here, um, at least on like the East Coast, like the whole sky was orange. Oh my god, Kelly, I didn't go outside for like four days. I was yeah. terrified. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yes, exactly. And like, but you were out in the. At work, I had to be because we still had um, patients ourselves to work with. And then literally we got an email from like um, the president and was just like, if you have to work remote, oh, um, go right ahead. You're excused to be able to work yeah. remotely because the air quality is so bad. And it's full on orange. But then we were just like, we can't go anywhere. Right. That happened to my partner too. He got all the way to Manhattan and his job told him, oh, you can go home. And he came home, and I was like, I'm stealing the windows. I'm putting, like, towels everywhere because I'm terrified. Exactly. Did you see people, I think it was in, like, Chicago or something, like, where the heck it was. But it was a state that one of the, it was on TikTok. The girl had um, the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a hand. It looks like that thing that you take your, th your temperature with for your forehead. Yeah. But it, like, scans the room yeah. for how much, oh, my God. Like, in, in her room with the windows closed was, like, oh. hazardous. Oh, my God. And I was like. I saw that TikTok and I was like, oh my god, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I know which TikTok you're talking about, like, yeah, so that's another prime example of, like, pros and cons of, like, online work, like, an online school. Some people have the option, some people don't, so, oh yeah, at least I'm so happy, like, you were able to, like, work from home and you didn't have to fully fully go outside because that day was awful it was so hot it was like everywhere smelled like fire it was just walking home to the train station was a nightmare yeah, i went outside to throw out my um my garbage and it mm -hmm. smelled terrible I, I told everyone like i went to bed mm -hmm. in new york and i woke up on tatooine from star wars and i didn't know what happened <laughs> i was like oh my god what happened yeah yeah sure <laughs> Yeah. So um, my next, so back on topic. So um, this one you touched upon a little bit. So um, what, how, what has your support system looked like in between like friends, family, your partner? Like how have they supported you through all this? That's a multifaceted question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when I was first experiencing my symptoms, going back to spring of 2021, mm -hmm. I was in a very awkward place in my life because I was graduating undergrad and in undergraduate, I had an executive position in my campus. And with that came lots of friends, flocks of friends, everyone wanted to be your friend. Mm -hmm. And I soon realized there's a saying, it's like, if you want to know who your real friends are, like, uh, get sick and you'll see like who who comes to you when I got sick I would say I had like let's say I had a, a friend group of I'm not exaggerating probably 10 or 15 people mm -hmm. that I knew that like I told everything to okay I only talked to two people oh from my, my undergraduate campus as of now and oh that's god. not counting my partner oh my god so <laughs> that that tells you that um and I think one of the things that hurt me the most was during that, a lot of it was uprooting their trauma as well of having family members that had neurological disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I felt guilty because I was like, I don't want to uproot all of that. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it felt like I can't be authentically me and this is me now because yeah. it's it's uprooting your trauma. And yeah. I didn't know what to do because I can't hide this part of myself, but I also don't want to uproot all those emotions. Yeah. So it was very, very difficult. It mm -hmm. took me a long time to figure out who were the people that I could really trust and who really were in my corner. Mm -hmm. And they know who they are. And thank you very much mm -hmm. for those people who have stuck around. Um, and surprisingly, I can say that I'm known to post about my condition on social media yep. it's no surprise like, yeah I, I see it all the time I see i'm time. very uh, like vocal about my conditions when i got diagnosed i made posts and like mm -hmm. did some people have problems with that post mm -hmm. yeah they did that po like i had mm -hmm. a lot of dms with people who were mad at mm -hmm. me and frustrated that i was sharing these things but mm -hmm. you also have people that you 
you didn't think would come out of the woodwork for like like you said high school and be like hey girl like I'm here for you yeah. like I was just like oh my god like like for example like 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 Kelly I mm-hmm. haven't talked to Kelly since like 2015 and I was like oh my god hi you know and it's it's amazing um you know those people that come out of the woodwork and say like you know, I, I struggle with this, I struggle with that, and, you know, they check up on me every single day, mm-hmm. and so this illness, although, like, it has impacted my life in so many negative ways, there's mm-hmm. also beauty in it, too, right, because mm-hmm. I would have not known that those people were in my corner, I would have mm-hmm. been like, oh, okay, and, you know, come hell or high water, mm-hmm. what was my support system going to look like? Mm-hmm. In terms of family, you know, my family's great. My mom has, you know, been there with me through everything. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of my family members still struggle with understanding exactly what my diagnosis is and like what that entails and what that looks like for everyday life. Mm-hmm. Um, and Eric's family too mm-hmm. has been wonderful, but I feel like the same applies because my diagnosis is not well known. Like it's becoming yeah. like so, sort of well known now because a lot of people are getting diagnosed with this post COVID, mm-hmm. but it, it's not really that understood socially. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of confusion as of why Sunday I'll be walking around and Monday I'll be in a wheelchair, you know, like in the beginning people didn't understand and it was a lot of like, what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was just on a, I was like uh, on a record that just kept replaying and replaying. Yeah. Well, I have dysautonomia, dysautonomia. I have pops. I have UDI. Like I just yeah. felt like I was explaining it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, my sibling partner has been amazing. He's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, his family has been amazing. My family has been amazing. My friends. But it still is so isolating. Mm-hmm. Like, you can still feel like you're so alone. And that's where I'm going to say that if anybody is ever going through these type of things, mm-hmm. I re- highly recommend that you get into a support group. Yeah. Because I, I have a support group for EDS and POTS, and they are mm-hmm. uh, really good people, and they are really always there and just shout out to them <laughs> <laughs> oh oh well i'm super happy that like i'm in your like circle of like close friends who like will constantly check up on you despite i don't message you every day i just do message you saying like yo i'm thinking about you and i definitely hope oh i want you to get better because medical issues chronically I can see it through your posts that it is not easy to cope with. And that's obviously my words of wisdom for you and also the audience out there as well. So I have seen her like share of like my ugly crying yeah. selfies. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, oh, so yes. Yeah, I, yeah I, saw, I saw one the other day. So and I was just that's when I was like. It, it, that's and and I share like people say like why do you post these things and it's like because life is not always going to be about oh fuck I'm at the Barbie cafe yeah. oh look now I'm at a staycation in the Bahamas yeah like, no it's <laughs> it's gonna be ugly sometimes mm-hmm. so yeah exactly exactly and I can totally like relate to you on that because like when I was going through my hardship like about like a year ago it wasn't even that long ago of like taking on like off topic but like um it, like taking on the four jobs and four classes you already know this my audience definitely knows this I'm very I was very vocal about it too because I was just like like I made it look like and sounded like that oh yeah I have this taken care of I can do this but nobody ever fully sees the hardship behind the good unless you're there with them 24 7 and if you're actually there with them through the hardship and and like what you said, like when your true friends like actually will reach out to you. And I I had a fair amount of people like reach out to me, checking in on me to see if it, I was okay. And then just asking, why don't you just quit this or like quit that? And I was just like, you don't make it, don't make it sound like that easy when someone that is, easy, right? yeah, exactly. Like, it's not that easy. Like, especially if like your ego, like just me personally, like my ego L was taking over me mentally. And I just wanted to. I had for some reason this urge to be proving that I could like do anything. Syndrome. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean, like it was feeding my ego, and I was just like, "Oh, I can't quit because everyone thinks I like give up too easily." I used to think that, but that now that I look back on it, I wish I could tell, oh, like that person, just like don't do that to yourself. It is not worth it. So, and that's another reason that, um, inspired me to make this show and show like chill time and then bring it up. Like, 
everything and then give advice. Which, by the way, Celine is coming out with her own podcast soon. Oh, Kelly. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am. As soon as I, I have, unfortunately, I got uh, ill and mm-hmm. have, I'm not able to get my podcast equipment but as soon as i'm able to get my podcast equipment i'll record yes for uh, sure i'll be tuning I, in i'll be tuning I in say what it is here, uh, up to you up to you this All is right, like so, you're my spotlight today so it's going to be called the pick me up and it's a mental health podcast as well it's going to be on uh spotify and all the works um yeah. our first episode is going to be a lot like this episode it's just going to be like chronic illness and mental health mm-hmm. um and then we'll be discussing topics such as like lgbt mm-hmm. q mental health and like accepting versus you know identity and what that looks like mm-hmm. men's mental health um you know mental health stigma and all mm-hmm. those like you know what is dbt what is act you know things like that so yep. mm-hmm. yeah i'm excited to hear it eh? <laughs> once it comes out i'll be the first one to subscribe for sure and hey, right. don't worry kelly when i get my lp i'll give you a session yay um, of course just not me we'll get it I'll, you'll sit down and i'll be like so when did it start <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah, of course. I would definitely love to like speak on your podcast too. You spoke on mine, which is awesome. So, um, we mentioned coping like earlier. So, um, this one, I'm and these next two questions again. I'm going to just condense it together. So, um, how do you cope with your dark days? And um, like maybe like name some techniques that you um have used because um. In every single one of my shows, I always offer some kind of advice. So what would you, um, what, so what techniques do you use that personally works for you? So there's a technique that I like called um, worry time. And so what that is, is that, and I suggest these, to every technique I'm going to say is like mm-hmm. things that I would su- suggest to clients or things that I have learned in mental health classes. Mm-hmm. So these are like real things. So like, okay. So, like, grab a pen and grab a paper and write this down, people. But, um, so worry time is basically when you give yourself a designated time in the day to, like, sit down and basically ruminate about whatever's on your mind, like, in terms of, like, negatively. So, for me, that would look like making sure that if I really, now I'm not saying do this, like, every day, but I'm saying, like, if you need to do it and you're feeling overwhelmed, like, do it. But, like, um, like, for me, just, what time is it eight o'clock like yeah seven o'clock or six thirty. i was in my living room and for that, that timer for like 20 minutes mm-hmm. and i just had like a deep cry like mm-hmm. a guttural cry which is like you know and, and really just in my thoughts mm-hmm. in regards to everything that's going on right now medically and after that it was okay i'm gonna put the lid on this for now i'm gonna go do what i have to do i'm gonna take some deep breaths and then i will come back to this when it's time for another worry time and that helps me make sure that I'm honoring the emotions mm-hmm. without letting it consume the whole day because mm-hmm. I'm really big on I hate it when people say like oh just think positive mm-hmm. that's not like a, like 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 or, or just like oh just relax oh thanks mm-hmm. you know like I, I'll, I'll make sure to do that from now on <laughs> like when you're having a panic attack and people are like just breathe just deep breathe and you're like thanks amy but like i can't breathe right now i feel like i'm choking like, yeah exactly you know, like you have to you know have those moments of just like being in your emotions and like feeling it and living in it mm-hmm. and you know knowing that you're in a safe place to release those emotions but also put the lid on it and knowing that you're in a safe place where you're not going to go down a dark hole Mm -hmm. um that's really really important i definitely would recommend to anybody that before they try that technique to discuss it with their mental health you know practitioner if they have one and if you don't you know i understand therapy is not accessible to all and should be Mm -hmm. but you know try to get into a program try to see if you can find one that is accessible to you and ask about that technique before you use it but that is something that personally helps me Mm -hmm. something else is something called the empty chair technique which is again another way of like me releasing my emotions and feeling them but also putting the lid on them when it's time to be so the empty check technique is used in counseling it's when you like obviously there's there's a dilemma there's a problem and so your counselor will ask you to look at like a chair or spot in the room and envision like i guess the person that's the tr- the problem mm-hmm. right so for me it sounds crazy but i i I imagine just my body 
and me just being like, why? Like, like, why did you fail me? Why did you do that? And just having the time to like talk to it and be like, like give it a personality, like personification, because it just helps me feel like I'm getting it out there. Um, that really helps. Mm -hmm. Also, reframing thoughts mm -hmm. really, really helps. Um, and taking the time to do the things that you like doing. So a lot of times when you deal with these chronic illnesses, you know, our two best friends, anxiety and depression, are not too far behind. Yeah. And they like to hold hands and skip with each other <laughs> everywhere they go. Yep, <laughs> but, yep. Um, it's really important that even on those days where you don't feel like you want to do anything, to just, like, have a little reminder, I guess, of the things that kind of make you you. Mm -hmm. Like, if that's for me, even just putting on, like, an episode of Dance Moms for the 50 million times in the background <laughs> and just having it play, like, that's my life. Like, how many times have I heard, how many times has your daughter beat your daughter this year? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the soundtrack to my life. I just, and it, it takes me up. Like, I was in the ER last week. And what was I doing? I was sitting in my little hospital bed, no headphones, because I got a new phone and doesn't have an headphone jack. Oh, okay. Complete full volume, just like Abby Lee Miller screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh, and my like, God. All of and me just being perfectly content. I'd be mm. like, okay, take your bloods. Take, mm. take, take whatever blood draw you need, but I'm going to continue watching it. You know, and kind of just having those things to support you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is that's a good one. Do you journal or? I okay. I write poetry from time to time. Okay. I'm I'm pretty good at creative writing. I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. I really really like creative writing. For me, I'm I'm a testy. I'm a performer. And when um, I first got pots, and I discovered this the drum, I lost that of myself a lot. Like oh, I have not performed on stage, or just for anyone for like a very very long time and one day when everyone left in my house I was like you know what I don't care what my vitals are gonna be I'm gonna stand up and I'm just gonna sing like my favorite song Sounds and good. it's she she used to be mine from waitress oh, oh yeah I, I remember you love waitress yeah. you love waitress and that song if anyone go take a listen to that song after this but if anyone knows the lyrics I had so much of a more deeper connection with this song being diagnosed because it was imagining my body before diagnosing and being like, she used to be mine. Like that was like, like that was me. And like, I can't get that back. And it was the raw emotion, Kelly, of me just like belting mm -hmm. the shit out of that song. Mm -hmm. My neighbors probably hated me. <laughs> but after, afterwards, I didn't care what my vitals were. I didn't care how high my heart rate was, but I just needed to get that out. And once I did, I, I sat, I stopped. Mm -hmm. But I, it just felt so cathartic and so much better. That's good. That's good. Uh, uh, like at least you have like te a healthy technique. I'm hoping, and like to like cope and like I'm. Do you do that a lot on your darker days as well, or? I mean, I would be a liar and say that on my darker days I was like, I'm gonna go journal. I'm gonna go like on my darker days. I definitely am the type of person to just like, if I want to talk about it, I'll reach out to you and I'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I need a moment to myself. Yeah. And I'm definitely the type of person to, I'm known to go in my room and close my door and be like, I just need to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I've really learned to, and I don't, I don't know if this sounds bad, but to like my own company. Mm -hmm. And to like, you know, and I just need that time to like unplug. Yeah. I just like think about something else. And that for me really helps on my, on my dark days. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I like, to what was the word I'm looking for here? I'm thinking like Good Luck Charlie when they make that. <laughs> but I like to document my dark days. Uh, you mean like vlog, like, like vlogging like vlog, or video like diaries, TikToks or a video diary or mm -hmm. something like that? Because I, and not only does it wear, raise awareness for people who don't know about this condition and don't know about like, chronic illness, like advocacy in general, but like. It also helps that when you're in a better place to go back and look at that and being like, I got through that. Like, I did that. You know what I mean? Like, that was a hard time and I pulled through and I can pull through this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that that really helps. There's a quote and I love it, but it's like, <laughs> you've gotten through 100% of your worst days. Yeah. And I I, I heard of that quote before. I don't remember who said that. Yeah, I don't know who it is. Yeah, but it's I, a good I don't one. I who that is. I don't know who it is. 
Yeah, I'll probably, if I can find it, I'll link it in, like, the description or something. But, like, I know that quote, like, if you survive, what you like, you survived your dark days, like... It, obviously, in the moment, it could seem like the worst possible thing, but if you think about it in the long term, it's just kind of like, like, okay, this happened, but you survived through it. That's good. And then... You can't find nothing, Joseph. You can't find the person that said this quote. Yeah. <laughs> no name comes up. So. Oh, my God. No. 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 <laughs> well, I'll, I'll also look around for it to see if, um, if I can find it. But, uh, no, like, I remember, like, what you said earlier about, like, when people, like, tell you, like, oh, just stay positive, or it's just, like, calm down, take a breath, or just, like, like, do this, do that to calm down, like, oh, my God, it is not that easy, it's really not. I had so much, I had a lady in the hospital one time because the doctor who was treating me in the ER flat out Kelly I swear to god I told him my neurologist name my neurologist's name is Dr. So and so and my neurologist is a, like a highly like prestige neurologist like mm-hmm. he's related to Dysautonomia International mm-hmm. he spoke like he but at their conference like he's like one of the big names mm-hmm. and so I said my my neurologist is Dr. So and so and he diagnosed me with that's you know such and such and you know this is not anxiety this is such and such and the doctor like looked at me and was like well i think his diagnosis is wrong and i think this is panic attacks and i was like so defeated that honestly kelly i just said okay can i go home (laughs) and as i was going home he was speaking so loudly to me that the lady that was at the other end of the room moved the curtain oh my god over to me and said classical music really helps me honey (laughs) and I looked at her and I said thank you Mm -hmm. but my nervous system I have a neurological disability yeah and classical music is not gonna help my autonomic nervous system and she looked at me Kelly I swear to everything I love she like put her hand on my knee and was like oh yeah I know like sure you do sweetie oh my sure God. you have a neurological disability and i was just like what is it about me that yeah. nobody takes seriously exactly oh my god no when you just the fact you just said that i was just like okay the health system is like insane like it is insane i was just joking you're jo- it was like that TikTok camera. Like you're joking. Yeah, you're joking. I would yeah. trust. Trust me. Like if I heard that, like I'm, uh, if I heard that, I probably would just be like screaming and just like switch oh, doctors. Really? You can't do that because the moment you show emotion, they're gonna, you know, as a woman, it's gonna be like, oh well, have you seen a therapist? Yeah. And you know, have you talked to your GYN about this? Do you think it could be menstrual related? Like that's the reality we go through as yeah. women, not to be that person and not to always bring it back, but that's what it goes through. And especially, you know, like bonus points if you're a woman of color, because yeah. you're just gonna be told that you are argumentative, unreasonable, yeah. aggressive, and then that's gonna go on your record. And now whatever doctor you see that has like let's say because all of like a lot of places share what's called epic and so epic like is a medical record that like because of HIPAA purposes like yeah. everyone is allowed to see like all of your medical history dating back to like whenever the heck you started right yep like let's say you go to see a new doctor they're gonna pull up their chart and it's gonna say you know uh jane doe anxiety panic attack yeah you know, panic, panic, panic. and now whenever jane doe comes in with their concerns the doctor like is gonna hold an implicit bias whether they know it or not yeah and whether they mean it or not they're gonna subconsciously be like mm-hmm. did you drink water today you know oh what i mean and it's gonna be like, ah! yeah just like something that's just not very helpful because it's just like i feel like um uh, like you know your body you know when something physically doesn't feel right and it's just getting like the other person to like actually listen to you and like listen to the patient and i feel like is like a key point or like um as well so um my last question that like this is gonna be like you i know you just touched upon it just a little bit too what advice would you give someone who is in your shoes 
specifically with EDS or like just a disability? Just like any kind of like chronic, um, any kind of chronic issues, like not relating, not specifically yours, but just like chronic issues, like in general, if like you've had medical, medical issues and just doctors not listening to you, just like any kind of advice you have for like someone who is dealing with chronic issues and doctors not listening. I think one of the most powerful things that you can do is bond together with the people that know your Mm -hmm. experience firsthand. Mm -hmm. Because as much as like anybody can say, like, I understand what you're going through, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it's a different feeling when they understand firsthand because Mm -hmm. you you don't feel so quote unquote crazy, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So I think support groups are definitely a big thing, but also I think advocacy, there's a lot that's still not done Mm -hmm. and you know accessibility is not the bare minimum Mm -hmm. this is not about just putting a ramp on your building so that it's wheelchair accessible yeah you know if that even makes it wheelchair accessible like there is a lot more that's to be done and um sorry i'm here that's okay my dog is jumping on me and i don't want her to get tangled up in the wire that's okay that's okay hey and hello (laughs) So this is my my little hot water bottle. It's always so warm. <laughs> but, um, okay. Definitely, I feel like that helps. Knowing that you're you're valid, your feelings, your emotions are valid, and it's really really hard when you feel like the world's turned against you. So that's why I feel like giving yourself those support systems in terms of support groups is mm-hmm. definitely needed, and just continuing to advocate for yourself and continuing to push. For me, um. It typically takes a POTS patient about seven years to get a diagnosis of POTS, according to Dysautonomy International. It took me less than a year because I was in my PCP's office every day. Mm -hmm. And that also hurt me because, like, now in my record, anxiety is the top diagnosis. Because I'm in the office every day and I'm like, oh, I found these things and I found these things and I was so invested in it. But at the end of the day, I feel like that's what helped me get where I am because I knew something was wrong. And if you know something is wrong with your body, advocate for yourself and keep on going. Um, Just know the productive way to do so Mm -hmm. that you don't feel quote unquote crazy when you experience medical gaslighting Mm because unfortunately it is reality for many Mm -hmm. of us. Um, so yeah, and, and girl, like I said, if you guys cry, cry, like, <laughs> take a good cry. Yeah. Um, I think a quote that I kind of came up with myself, I don't know if, if it was created before me, so I'm not going to take that credit, mm-hmm. but I put it on my phone. It, uh, little you would want you to keep on going. Yeah. And when I'm at my darkest days, I'm like, I just don't want to put up with this anymore. Like, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. What would you say to younger you if younger you was standing in front of you? I don't think I would be able to look at that girl and tell her, like, mm-hmm. it's over. Like, your body's never getting better. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, you wouldn't tell a child that. You would not. So I think having those techniques and the matching that really does help you to keep on going. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that. That no, because like I mean, like I don't know. I think there's been like other quotes like based like kind of around that. Maybe not like word for word, right. inner but child. yeah, like your inner child. Like, what would you say to like your inner child? You know, if like you were on your darkest days, which I think that's like a fantastic, like quick little topic to like touch upon, like your inner like trying not to give up on your inner child because your inner child would not think that um you would be at this point up to today like your inner like your younger self would not expect to like have to handle like um medical issues like in your adult years so oh and then she wouldn't want she never gave up and then you definitely should not give up on like your younger self either so and then like the dog is playing with her toy in the background. <laughs> That's okay. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. So you're fine. You're fine. So, um, but yeah, I, like I remember this one time, like, um, what was it? I remember like um, reading something about like inner child somewhere, and it's just like you would not give up 
on your younger self so don't give up now so like even as like in your adult years now you're definitely have more independence and everything i know you told me that you felt like you lost your independence a little bit but you are still striving and that's what fully matters it matters here and you never gave up on yourself and that's what also matters and i think that's also like a good thing to like um mention as well to my listeners out there just don't give up on your yourself of like i would not think of like a year ago that i would be in a position to be able to talk on a podcast and um uh, have like uh, my podcast has been played about 200 times across all my episodes so yeah and yes i would say everybody (laughs) (laughs) oh my god i love that i love that but yeah um so yeah, like um and it's only been like a couple months since I uh launched and I I actually did this kind of like on the fly through like a support group as well so i'm also part of like a support group of like entrepreneurs uh manifestors yeah so like and they really hype you up and i brought this idea of wanting to start a podcast with like my mentor or and she was just like go for it pick whatever topic you want it's okay if it doesn't look right at the very beginning just go for it you have time to edit as you go and yeah i edited my uh, cover art and that's a tip i have for you too celine like have really nice cover art to like make it like pop uh, girl see. i already designed one yeah but this podcast in the works like before 2023 it's oh. just i never had t- between like all the tests and all the procedures and all the doctor's appointments mm. and in school <laughs> and the internship it's like i never had time to sit down and record mm. but unfortunately fortunately unfortunately um because of where my health is right now i'm currently home for mm-hmm. the next month so maybe i'll have time to yeah <laughs> and i mean hey by all means girl oh just like go for it hey, like your first episode like may not be the best your best work and that's perfectly fine because like my like for me my very first episode is the most popular episode that has had the most plays but at the same time my cringiest episode because i was like i didn't i don't know what i'm doing but i'm just cringy i made a youtube channel when i was 15 years old yeah 14 years old that's cringy that's cringy do you remember when zane left one direction yes bro do you remember when i made a sit down video addressing the world with my thoughts yeah i remember please I remember that Talk episode. Talk me about cringy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. No. All right, all right. Yeah. I mean, like, so, but that's just an, another tip I have for you, like, for your podcast. So, um, so that's gonna be end of this episode. Oh, so thank you so much, Celine, for being on the show, and I will see you guys next time on Chill Time. <laughs>